Hey guys, welcome back to Homegrown Outdoors. Today, we're going to be starting a new segment. We're going to start doing Bible studies. Uh, we'll post those every Sunday. Our faith is really important to us, just like our hunting and fishing, so we'd like to combine them together. Uh, we're going to be walking through this book. Uh, it's Caleb's book, so I'll let him talk a little bit about it now. Yep, this is a Mossy Oak Bible study. It's called Tracking David and His Pursuit of God's Heart. And I've had this book for a while now. I've gone through it before. I really enjoyed it and learned a lot from it. So hopefully y'all will do the same. I'm going to read a little bit of the introduction right now just to kind of give y'all an overview of what we'll be talking about in this book. It says, Over the next six weeks, you'll study different aspects of the life of David, king of Israel, and a man after God's own heart. By tracking David's life, you will begin to discover how his experiences carry over to your own. And in doing so, you will open a wide path to pursuing a deeper relationship with God. David was a man of worship, so model his life by spending time in prayer and meditation each week before you begin your study. Challenge yourself to answer the questions honestly, read all the recommended scripture passages thoroughly and thoughtfully, and end each study with more time of prayer. Anytime you dedicate yourself to delving into the Word of God, you have the chance to change your life in a radical way. Don't underestimate the power of this experience. If you commit yourself to it fully, may God bless your time in His Word. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and get started in the first lesson. This one is titled, David the Anointed. And uh, the subtitle is called, Who Was David? It says, David was a descendant of Judah, one of the original sons of Israel, and a leader of one of the twelve tribes of Israel. First Chronicles 2, 3-15 through 15 provides the complete geneal genealogy of David. And Levi is going to read verses 12-15 through 15 to you right now. All right, it said, Boaz, the father of Obadad, and Obadad the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of Elab, his firstborn, and the second son of Anabadiah, and the third Shema, the fourth Nethel, and the fifth Radii, the sixth Ozum, and the seventh David. So that kind of gives you an idea of the genealogy of David, how he came into being, obviously. And now it uh, goes on to say, so we learn here that Jesse, David's father, was the grandson of Boaz, a worthwhile man to study whose story can be found in the Old Testament book of Ruth, and had seven sons. David was the youngest. 1 Samuel 16, 10-12 says, Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all your sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ready with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, because he is the one. So this says that from the scripture, we realize three things about David. That he was the youngest son, he was a shepherd, and he was chosen by God. It says David was out tending the sheep when the prophet Samuel came to visit his home. Earlier, God had told Samuel that Saul's tenure as king was nearly over. Saul had disappointed God, so God found the people another king. He told Samuel to visit Jesse because the next king would be one of his sons. After reviewing the six older sons, Samuel realized that none of them made the grade. Frustrated and weary, Samuel asked Jesse if there was another son. Jesse remembered his youngest son, David, and sent out a messenger to find him and bring him to Samuel. The Lord told Samuel, this is the one. Now it's going to go into a few questions that we're going to answer from our perspective and our point of view. And we encourage y'all to write down your answers or just think about what you would answer to the question. And... The first question says, read 1 Samuel 16, 10 through 12 again, and why do you think Jesse forgot about his son David? So Levi, can you read it one more time? 10 through 12? Yeah, 10 through 12. So he asked Jesse, are these all your sons you have? And he said, no, they are still the youngest, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, well, sit for him, for we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in, and he was ready with fine appearance and handsome features. And the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, because he is the one. Well, I think my opinion is, you know, Jesse 
kind of put David on the back burner because he wasn't the type of son that that he envisioned having. And you know, his other six older sons were all big and strong and warriors, and he was proud of them. But David says he was, you know, handsome and but he just wasn't as big and strong and kind of the looked like a mighty leader like his other sons were. So I think that's part of the reason that Jesse just kind of forgot about him and he didn't really, you know, remember that he had all really even had David as a son until Samuel asked if he had another son. And, um, I don't know, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, you know, my thing is, is I don't really think that Jesse forgot his son. Uh, he just kind of overlooked him. I mean, obviously, you don't forget your offspring, but like Caleb said, he was kind of pushed to the back burner because he wasn't the typical, you know, big, strong leader that the the, the other brothers were. But I kind of disagree with the question about him forgetting him because obviously he doesn't for you. You wouldn't just forget your son. But we'll move on to the next question. Second question says, can you relate to a time when you focused on what seemed to be very important and right? as Jesse did with his older sons, but God brought forward something totally different from what you had imagined. And for me, this is definitely true during, from the time I could walk, I always played baseball. And I was decent at it, and uh, played all through school and a couple years in high school, and just kind of realized it wasn't for me. And up until then, I had always thought, and my family had always thought that that would be what I'd do. I'd go to college, and maybe play professionally, but uh, I don't know if I was near that good, but um, but I just kind of came to a point where I could feel God telling me that that's not what he had planned, and I didn't know what else he would have had planned for me, but uh, you know, slowly and surely I just kind of came to realize that, you know, being in the outdoors and um, bringing people out into the outdoors who haven't been there before and teaching them and taking them to experience new things like taking family members who haven't been say bow fishing before and that's something I really enjoy and I I have a lot of fun doing that and taking people deer hunting for the first time that, that's something that brings me more joy than anything else and then obviously doing these videos and filming and being out with my best friends it gives me a lot of joy as well and uh, so Levi can you relate to a time when uh, God brought something totally different from what you imagined. I know you had baseball plans as well. Yeah, well, baseball was always my biggest thing. Played from the time that I was five years old. Uh, played through middle school, played through high school. Uh, had some injuries in high school. I actually went on to play at the college level. Uh, ended up having shoulder surgery uh, my freshman year. Uh, came back from the surgery after a 10-month recovery time then injured it again sophomore year and I just felt that you know God was trying to tell me something it just wasn't working out for me uh, obviously he's had other things planned uh, right now I'm studying to be uh, athletic director in college uh, that might be a route that I might want to take but like Caleb said the outdoors is just something that we really love and we really enjoy and that's just something we think that God's laid on our heart and would be something that we definitely want to pursue in the future, uh, especially through Homegrown Outdoors. Uh, you know, we just have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, and you know, me and Levi were on the phone a few weeks ago, and he was kind of proposing this idea to do these videos to me and saying that, and, you know, how baseball was over for him now, and it's been over for me for a couple years now. And, you know, what would be our platform to share our faith? And, you know, we both just kind of realized that, now, this is what we love to do. We love to deer hunt. We love to fish. We love to spend time with other people who enjoy the same things. And so if we can bring our Christian faith to people through things that we share in common with them, then they're going to be much more likely to, to listen to us. So, you know, if you've enjoyed our bow fishing videos, if you've enjoyed our other videos, then hopefully you'll take the time to watch this as well and uh, really see that we're serious about our faith and that's something that's very important to us. And we hope that you'll continue to watch these videos and that you'll learn something from them. Yep, like we said, we'll post one uh, weekly. Every Sunday, we'll have one up on uh, the YouTube page and we'll post links for it on our other social media. So if y'all just stay tuned with that, uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. And if y'all enjoy it, subscribe to the YouTube page. 
but we'll go from there. Also, one last quick announcement. Don't forget the bow case giveaway. We will give it away when we get to 75 subscribers on YouTube. It's a real nice Matthews Black's Creek case, so y'all don't forget about that. And stay tuned for more deer hunting footage coming soon.